Hey there, Kim Kunkel here, owner and designer over at easydigitals.com, backgrounds and templates for photographers. Today, I want to go over how to customize the Epic Dreams new background that was created by one of my designers, Ali, and I'm super excited about this background and I hope you are too. So it's gonna start out like this and when we're finished, it's going to look like this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is pull up the background. So I'm gonna to come to final file and click open. And I'm gonna pull up the background, which is right here. Okay, let's go over some of these layers. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is we have adjustment layers, which will help you with the coloring of the entire image and help the image blend better once you get your photo in but there's also, also some additional tweaks we can make to uh, help that along. We have glows, which if you turn these off with the little eyeball, you can see what they do. And you can also change the color of these glows. So if you wanted like a red look or green, you can change that. So that's kind of cool. Same with this, red. So that's, how that works and let me go ahead and undo that okay we've got our confetti layer and our particles text on the bottom the shape uh, right here which you can change the color of that by double clicking it and then you can just change it to any color you want and the smoke which we will adjust the floor shadows kind of helps sell the illusion and then we have the ice so you can completely change this into an ice arena we have some haze and then we have the background so let's go ahead and open up our player here and add him we have this basketball player so this has already been extracted from the background and I have videos on how to extract from the background. The first thing I always like to do is change it to a smart object by right clicking it and click, you have to right click it over here and click convert to smart object. And that way when you resize it or make changes to it, you're not going to lose any of the quality. So you can right click it. There's a couple ways you can pull it in. You can right click it and then duplicate layer and then you can choose the background layer and then you can click OK then you come over here and it's already in there and then you can move it up to this red your your photo here it can be either above it or below it it doesn't matter because this is just a placeholder I make this red so that it's easy to find but again you may not always want your player in this spot you may want your player above all of the particles and confetti but we are going to erase some of this confetti so that it doesn't cover his face because I don't like confetti or particles on people's faces. Now my player is over here. The other way you can do it is you can drag this out and then you can just drag it in. Or you can drag the thumbnail in. So let me get take these out and let's go back to this. Okay, so if you if it came in the wrong size, then you basically just grab this corner and press shift and you'll resize it. Let's say it came in this size and you couldn't grab the little corner, then you can press control zero, which is a short shortcut that I finally forced myself to memorize. Instead of going to view fit on screen, which was what I was doing forever, I finally memorized the shortcut, which is control zero, which is a lot faster. And then you can grab this corner and press shift and pull this down and make it the size that you want and press enter and then move it right and left or however you want it. Now the crest has all these layers. If you want to move or resize the crest, you select the crest and just make sure you don't have auto select layer. And then as long as you grab the whole, the whole file, then you can resize it and you can move it and it just makes it a lot easier. So, I'm just going to resize this and move it and press enter. I'm going to press control zero and I can see it bigger because it's fitting it on the screen. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make some more changes to this. Okay, right now it's set up for hockey because the hockey puck is on and we're going to change that to basketball. 
Oh, basketball was on too. Okay, so you turn on the little eyeball for basketball and these little effects, you probably just don't even want to mess with them. Just leave them on at all times to change the color of this little ribbon, I guess you call it. Double click, banner maybe, maybe banner is a better word. And you can click inside his uniform and that's a nice color of pink, but you can change it. And sometimes these inside layer uh, colors make a better color than going pushing it all the way over to the edge like this you get a little bit more depth by doing it this way but it is a little bit pink so you can push it up and you can brighten it however you want so I, I think my player eventually I'm going to brighten him so it'll match better so as far as changing the text you have these layers here and you will have to change three layers to change the text. Or you can turn these off and only deal with one layer. But it depends on the depth that you want. With the shadow, it looks nice. So let's change this. I'm going to turn that off, turn this one on. You can also change, as I'm changing these, you can change this font. But again, you'll have to do each one separately. You can just arrow down and change it to anything you want. Grab this. It's probably not the best one to show you on. Let me undo that, okay. Okay, so let's turn these all back on. And there must be a typo because it doesn't look right. So let's see. Right there. If you, if you have a typo, you'll know because the shadow doesn't look right. All right. And then you can change this. And I'm going to show you what happens if it's too big. Oops. Okay, so now it's too big and this shadow which is clipped and you always want to make sure that it remains clipped. If it comes unclipped, then you need to right click it and click create clipping mask. But go ahead and grab these two layers, come up to your transform tool and press shift. And if you want to, you can even press alt and it will make it come to the middle. And then press enter. The shadow, it looks like it needs to be a little bit bigger. Keep an eye on that and move this to the right because the shadow needs to be right. Now you may think that this doesn't look right now. So you can either stretch it or change the font so that it fits better. Or I'm just undoing that. You can come over to warp the text. Click on this little tool right here. And after playing around with this, I found bulge at 25% looks nice for three letters or three numbers or whatever. And so I can come to this one and do the exact same thing. But you can play with all of these and figure out if there's one that you like better. So that's how you change that. And you change this text the exact same way and you can change the color. And you can change the effects that are on all of these inner shadow, drop shadows, just double click them and just play with all this stuff to your heart's content. Let's see, he's got the basketball. You can resize these the same way. If you have a longer name, you just grab them all three, click your tool and press shift and make it bigger or smaller based on the name and just you can change the font if it doesn't fit right. So you can make any changes that you want like that. Okay, let's go ahead and work with the shadows now. The shadows are right here, the smoke. And I'm gonna press show transform controls, but not auto select so that it will move this around whenever to like however I want. And then I'm pressing shift. I'm just gonna drag this out because I wanna make it much bigger. Press enter. And then I have this smoke layer. I'm gonna do the same thing. And if maybe I want to curve the smoke to match his form better, I can do that. And I can press control zero and it will let me see all my corners. 
press enter, then I can get back um, on something else and press control zero and see it close up. Oh, control Z, now I'm on that. Okay. Here we are moving around. Hopefully I'm not going too fast for you because if I am, you can at least rewind the video. Um, another thing I always like to do is add a outer glow to my player. So I come over, I double click my player. I come to outer glow, click this, change it to white, make it big, big as possible. Click OK, right click outer glow and create layer. Take my outer glow layer, come up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, make it big. Um, this is 635. Then if you want to, you can lower the opacity depending on how you want it to look. Okay. Let's talk about these, this confetti. I don't know if any of it's covering his face. Let's see. It, okay. None of it's covering his face, but if it was, I would come to this confetti and I would take a brush, make sure it's a soft brush. This is a big brush. You can reduce the size with your left bracket and you can make sure black is on top here or switch it out. This is how you reset it. Black is on top and you just brush away the confetti that you don't want if it's covering him. Oh, the confetti needs to be above him. Okay. That's why, Oh, see how this can happen. <laughs> Select the mask and then, yeah, the confetti was, was not, uh, so you could have confetti, you know, covering his uniform or whatever, but I just wanted to show you how to, um, you know, how to get rid of it. And then let's turn off, let's see, I'm going to turn off this. Uh, you can, you can change this text down here the same way. You just use your uh, type tool and then you just start typing different text. It also has effects on it that you can change. So I'm going to turn it off though, because it doesn't really go with this one. Okay. A couple things I'm noticing. Uh, one thing is this little black piece of confetti on his leg. I, it might bug me because it's not obvious what it is. And that just makes it confusing. So. Come on. Why am I not getting my brush? Okay. I'm not sure where I was, but okay. So I'm going to get rid of that. Another thing is I kind of like my sparks to be in front of this, to make this look like it's integrated into it. So I'm going to take my crest and I'm moving to move it, all these layers down underneath my confetti. Yeah. Wait, it might need to be, where is it? Underneath particles. Okay. So now the particles are coming on top of the crest. So that's totally up to you. Another thing is you have to decide if you want your player to be like partially covering the crest, or if you want the crest to be on top of him. So that's um, a judgment call for you, whatever, however you think it looks best. Cause you can make the crest partially come into your player, which kind of connects them, which is, I, I, sometimes I like that, you know, it just depends. So then it could look like the crest is in front of him, which would mean that I would need to put him back here, down here. And let's see right here. Oh, but I didn't bring his outer glow. So I'm going to put this, oh, I'm going to grab his outer glow and put that below him like that. Okay. So now he is behind the crust. Okay. Let's um, talk about these adjustments here. You can turn this one on and make sure then you can arrow down through all of them and see what kind of, I kind of like the blue cooling. So you can just decide if there's one that you like and you can even turn it up with this little density slider. And you can adjust all of these. The balance, I'm going to turn this off for a minute. So you can, if you need to bring in the reds, 
So you can just uh, play with those. And then the brightness, same thing. You can adjust that. So just these are all techniques for you to help the blend the, the player more with the photo. But sometimes the player needs its own thing. So in that case, you come to the player and you add a specific adjustment just for it, any of these. You could add a photo filter if you felt like the player needed to be more red or more blue, curves. Then you right click and create clipping mask if you only want it to affect the player. So a lot of people ask me how to adjust just the player. And I like to do auto just to see what Photoshop thinks I should do to this. Same thing with levels. Levels, right click, create clipping mask, auto. It makes it, in my opinion, that's too dark. I don't like it that dark. But another thing you can do is you can add, um, you can do some dodging and burning to add highlights, which I have other videos that show how to do that. But in order to do that, you can add a 50% gray mask and you can, that's the best way to do it. So you add a new layer, edit, fill, 50% gray, okay, change it to overlay mode. And then you take your burn tool and your dodge tool and you can burn it down. And you can even clip that to the player so it doesn't affect the background or anything. And you can, uh, you can press Alt and it will automatically make, put it into dodge mode. Dodge is to can brighten and burn is to darken. So this is burn and then I press Alt and this is dodge. So if I press my little eyeball, Alt, um, actually, let me unclip it or so you can see it, release clipping mask. You can see what it's done to this. Go back to that. Okay, so that's how you do your dodging and burning. We can talk a second about shadows. If you do need to add a shadow to this, you can add a new layer and you can come over to your gradient tool. If you have a player that's up in the air like this and you just want to add like a little shadow down here to make it look more realistic, come over to this rounded gradient and just pull it out and then you can reshape it. And then you can put it into like a darken. You can just arrow through these and decide which one looks the best. Um, soft light, it's one of my favorites usually. And then you can reduce the opacity, press enter. So if you wanna add just a little bit of shadow there, it kind of sells the fake a little bit better. All right, um, I think that covers most of what I wanna show you about this template. Um, again, don't forget that you can turn off any of these uh, confetti or anything that you don't want on it and get completely different looks for different projects. So I hope you enjoy uh, this template and please let me know if you have any questions and have a creative day.